Hey, it's Mark. I'm coming at you with a video about choice grids. So a few teachers have asked me about choice grids and how to make them. Um, so if you're an older teacher and haven't seen these, I've been posting these uh, weekly to the younger kids' classrooms, um, just as sort of my teacher librarian role. Basically, this is a choice grid. This I didn't actually make this one. I think I just edited it. Um, but lots of people are making these choice grids. Um, I've made a couple, so I'm going to kind of show you how to do that. I figure it might be useful now in June with kids sort of dying out a bit, uh, kind of getting sick of the same thing maybe, this might be an opportunity to create something um, that's a little more open um, or just something a little different. It might be useful in September too, who knows? So here's what they look like. Now when the kids see these, they're gonna be sort of in a different mode. It's, it's gonna look more like a presentation mode, but basically each box has links to different websites. So what I've been doing generally is a story and then um, you know four, five, six, choices down below of things they might want to look at. Um, I'm not going to open this in present mode right now because when I do it seems to kill my recording. But what happens is um, you know you click on a link and it opens it opens a link. Okay so for example here's the giraffes can't dance story and then the kids can click on these other choices down below to go to websites that have um, information about giraffes or whatever. Okay so we're going to start one um, here and I'll show you how you can make one if you want to start one from scratch. So just in your regular drive, you're just going to create a new Google Sheet. Okay, it doesn't have to be anything complicated. And one thing you're going to want to do is clean it out here, get rid of all this garbage. Um, and you can choose a, a theme if you want, but it's not really necessary. One thing you're going to want to do is set your size before. If you try to set your size later on, it's going to be messed up. Um, so kind of think about how you want it to look. I'm just going to make it not as long here. I mean, I'll make it 10. Um, that looks pretty good. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I wanted more of a sort of a page style, let's say. Um, okay, so basically all you do is, you know, it's it works like any other Google Sheet. You can put your title, so maybe the kids are learning about Saturn. Um, you know, click the boxes that interest you or something. Okay, and you can, you know, make the text look pretty and all that kind of stuff. Um, another thing is you can change the background. So if you want to add an image in the background or you just want to add um, some sort of a color in there, whatever. Okay, so, you know, make your own choices there. Um, but let's say I'm going to have my, my boxes down below. So, you know, make a box and think about how many choices you're going to have. Maybe this will be four, let's say. So I'm just going to make a box, oh, about that big. Okay, um, and you can change the colors just like you would with any other any other element in Google Sheets. Okay, and then I can uh, control C that, control V, just to get my, my boxes going here. I don't think that lined up. Okay, one of the good things I like about Sheets and Google Draw is that you'll see those red guidelines telling me kind of where I should space things out, which is nice. Um, and I'm just gonna copy those two and paste two more below. And again, I'll get those lined up. Okay, and again, you might, you know, Make your own aesthetic choices here, but it might be nice to have just some uh, some different colors in the choice boxes, whatever. Okay, so that's your your basic start idea. Um, you can bring in images by insert image. So let's start like for example, I want to have kids read this Britannica entry. Okay, probably going to be reading level two for kids that are learning about Saturn. I think that's grade six, the space. So there we go. Um, so there's my link. So I'm going to copy that, um, and now I'm going to build my build my box, okay? And you can put whatever you want in your box, um, but you know, generally you might have some text that says, you know, I don't know, click here to learn about Saturn. Okay, and then like you might have a video, you might have whatever else you're gonna choose. Well, let's start with that box, okay? And I'm gonna insert an image just to spice it up a little. So let's see if I can find a nice image of Saturn here. Um, oh, that one's pretty. Sure, let's go with that one. So you can bring in some images to your box as well. Now you got to think about like you're making a like a collage, okay? So when you bring in things, it's just like making it on paper. Whatever I put in first is the back. So if I just sort of attach my link to the text, that means the kids are going to have to click on the text. If I attach it to the picture, same thing. If I attach it to the red box in the background, that might seem like it would work, but what's going to happen is if they mouse over the image. The image is on top of the box and it actually won't count as a clickable space. So this is sort of just one of those things you gotta keep in mind. So instead, I'm gonna bring in something on top of everything. So I'm gonna bring in another box, okay? And this box isn't gonna stay there. So maybe I'll make it like spray green, sorry, keep that in mind. 
but it's sort of on top now of the image, the text, and the background box, which is what I wanted. Now I can insert that link. So Control V, paste the link in, which is just the link I took from Britannica. And I've got this box that's on top of everything, okay? Now I can make that box transparent, so it's invisible, so that all the stuff I wanted to see, I can see, but there's an invisible clickable box on top of everything, okay? And that's kind of the way you're gonna wanna do this. So now I've got one box complete. Um, and then I, like I say, maybe I wanna do a video, whatever, whatever. The only other thing I'm gonna show you now is that you might wanna uh, connect with like a Google Doc, for example. Maybe you've got a little story starter, um, you know, life on Saturn, let's say. Um, do you think there could be any sort of life on Saturn? Saturn, Saturn, why or why not? Okay, so maybe that's my question. Um, and now you've kind of got two options here. You could make this just sort of a group project where you are maybe gonna insert a table and put a whole bunch of choices there and you're gonna say, hey, Evan, what do you think? And hey, Fred, what do you think? And whatever, 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 and leave them a spot where kids can then come in and say, I don't know, man. Um, whatever, whatever, too much pressure, Fred thinks. Um, or perhaps you wanna say, and give the kids instructions right in here, you might wanna say, you know, file, make a copy, and um, share with me, right? Um, whatever you do, now you're gonna want them to be able to have this sort of story starter, right? So the way you're gonna get that out there is you're gonna to go to share, and they've changed the way this looks, which is kind of obnoxious right in the middle of all this. But anyways, you're going to click down here where it says change link, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, I find it easier just to leave that on as anyone, just in case kids are logged in on their parents' computers or whatever might be going on. Now they're not required to be logged in with their Halton account. Or maybe you want to leave it. I don't know. Make your own choice. Um, and I could change that to editor. That would be if I wanted the kids to all edit their own box, like in that table format. Or I could say viewer, and that forces them to file make a copy before they're able to edit. So let's leave it like that for now. Okay, so once you've got the setup that you want, you just say copy link, and now I've got my link, okay? So I could add that. I'm not gonna do the whole boxing again, but you know, let's pretend I did, and I'm just gonna insert that link there, okay? So now we've got the setup that we want. And when the kids open this, um, right now it's just a boring kind of looking presentation, which is not what we're gonna have in the end here but we want them to be able to, you know, read instructions, click on the boxes, okay? So we've got that almost ready to rock. The last step here is you're gonna to wanna to publish it. So you're gonna go file, publish to the web. Um, these settings aren't gonna matter because we won't, we don't have a traditional slideshow going here. What we have is just really just one slide with our choices on it. Um, but you can set these to, you know, whatever you want. Um, and then I'm gonna publish. And the reason I'm publishing is because I want the kids to go to a link not to go into the slides. So now I've got this big honking link. I'm gonna uh, control C that to copy it. And then that's it. I'm gonna go into my classroom and I'm gonna be Mrs. Kelly today, why not? She's wonderful, let's just pretend. And then you're gonna leave your instructions and you're gonna say add, and you're not gonna link to the Google Drive. You're not gonna link to the slide, you're gonna add a link. And that link is gonna be the published um, website is what it actually is now, the published website version of that slideshow, okay? And when I post that, I'm not going to, but when I do post that, the kids will see the instructions and they'll see this link. And when they click on this link, they'll get this website version of the slideshow. So instead of having all this, the junk around it, it's just go, it just works perfectly. And when they click on the link, it opens the link and it's perfect, okay? When they click on this one, they get that Google Doc we started and on and on and on. So you can see how you can build fairly quickly, I mean, what was that, like 10 minutes? Um, how you can build some choices pretty quick. And you know, you can make it look a lot prettier than this, obviously, but that's the idea behind a trace grid. So hopefully that's of some use to you, um, or hopefully maybe you learned even just a small thing you didn't know, and uh, it comes in handy. Keep it real.